Previously on Bark 101, you got to join us for the miracle of life, the birth of nine lovely puppies. Now, even though they came out all right, we still have to monitor their weight and their growth the first couple, two to three days, because sometimes you might still get a puppy that passes. So it's still touch and go. We have to monitor their eating and their weight. If we see any problems, we've got to go to the vet. (laughs) <laughs> now, you don't have to be a breeder in order to find yourself delivering puppies someday. I remember our first dog when I was growing up was a miniature schnauzers named Cinders. And I saw the miracle of life happen on the kitchen floor. Now, a schnauzer's a great little dog. Lots of high energy. They need something to do through the day because they're very spirited. And they have lots of energy. So a good-sized house a good backyard garden they can run around in, or take them on good hikes and walks throughout the day, a couple hours a day. But they're really a companion, good family-friendly dog. They were bred for vermin catching, but they're a loving dog. They really don't shed much at all, so you do have to go get them groomed every now and again and have their ears and eyes checked out. They do have some health issues with bladders and cataracts on the eyes. But overall, they're a loving dog, great family dog. They're smaller in nature, very strong and peppy. Schnauzers also make for good guard dogs, as they do like to bark. They'll alert you at all the time when they sense danger or when they're happy and want to play, need to go outside, or just bored and they want something to do. So if you want a good starter dog, that's good high energy that's going to meet with your lifestyle of being active, a miniature schnauzer might be a good fit for you. Now let's get back to Anka and help her have those puppies. Now if you do find yourself in this situation, lots of paper towels is a good thing. You also want to have a quiet room so the dog doesn't get distracted or feel tense or pressured by other distractions. But remember when I said you might have a stillborn puppy? Well, I'm making sure that the placentas all come out in whole. And if we do have a stillborn puppy, which sometimes happens, you don't necessarily want to take it and hide it from the mama dog. You want to maybe clean it up a little bit. It's going to be still. It's going to be a sad moment. Prepare for it in advance. You want to let the mama dog see the pup. She needs to know that it's there. She knows she had it, but she doesn't want to get stressed thinking that it's lost. But you need to let it lay there. She needs to see it. And she needs to accept the fact that the puppy is not alive. This might take a few minutes. This might even take some hours. She might not detach from it for maybe a day, but eventually she'll not pay attention to it anymore and just focus on the puppies that are alive. At that time, just take the puppy quietly away and you can properly discard it. But you don't want to just take it away abruptly because the mama dog will always be looking for that pup and she'll be stressed and she'll be looking and hunting for it. You've got to let her say goodbye. Well, I was right. Nine puppies, and they all survived. This is really good news, because often you might have a puppy pass within the first couple days. The blondes are a a natural occurring color of the breed. They come in all blacks, black and gold, or blonde. And black and golds represent about 60% of the litters, um, puppies, uh, blondes about 30%, and then all blacks only about 10%. So they're very, very rare. They came into this world, the heaviest was about a pound and a half. Um, or just a little over a pound and a few ounces, and the shortest one, or lightest one, was just about 14 ounces. And the big, the biggest one of the litter, came number five, the light purple collar, this female blonde, she was in just over about a pound and four ounces. 
and then right behind her came her sister, which is the smallest of the litter, right about 14 ounces. So the biggest puppy and the little puppy, littlest puppy of the litter, came uh, first and second, puppy five and puppy six out of the litter. And yeah, that's right, that's uh, that's little brown. Look at him sleeping. That's my little Addy. They're so cute. Little tongue. Wow, aren't those puppies cute? Oh, they're gorgeous. But let's take a step back here now and be realistic. These dogs grow up. These dogs grow up. These dogs grow up big. A small female is gonna be around 60 pounds, 65 pounds. Could be as heavy as 85 to 90 pounds and a good health weight. And the males could get upwards of about 110, 115 pounds. Again, these are big guard dogs. They are not for everybody. They require constant training, good behavior techniques. They're slower to develop. It takes about two to three years for their full mass and size to develop, and also their maturity. But that's kind of true for any dog, okay? If you don't desensitize a dog to touch, feel, humans, loud noises, give them proper food and exercise, if you coop them up all day long, you're gonna have an unbalanced dog mentally, and that's when couches get chewed up, walls get bit into and dug through. When a dog doesn't have an outlet for its energy and it hasn't been trained properly or raised, it's gonna take out those aggressions in a negative format. Now regarding the hoof of art, it requires large spaces. If you're a first time puppy buyer, if you've only had small dogs in the past, or very amicable, wanting to please you dogs like labs and golden retrievers, you're not ready for a hope of art. Trust me, these dogs are strong-willed, that intelligence comes with an attitude, and if you train it correctly, it can be a joyous energy, or it could be a refined and anger, okay? These dogs are used as guard dogs. They're very strong, they're muscular. Don't let that long, luscious fur throw you off. Don't let the blonde hope of arts that look like a golden retriever make you think they're docile like a golden retriever. They are not. Here's just a normal day of playing with each other. Now I overcome these traits in the hope of art by doing lots of socialization. Like I said, I run a zipline business, so Anka is with me all the time. She meets people, she interacts, we touch her, we pet her, we love her. She's used to people. We've overcome that trait with proper training. But I take her outside as much as I can, wide open spaces, fresh air, let her get that energy out that helps a hope of art get a stable mind. But I also do unique things too. I do search and rescue training, and sometimes she might be walking on broken glass or nails or boards. So here we are, teaching her how to walk and protect the booties. <laughs> Look at her go. Oh. But in no time, this intelligent dog starts to pick it up real quick and starts to get a move on and get a gist of how things work. That's a girl. Look at her go now. <laughs> Still kind of high stepping, but she gets it in no time. But big open spaces. Here we are at beaches on Lake Superior in Northern Michigan. Just these dogs like space. You've got to introduce them to a lot of stimuli. They're great swimmers with a partially webbed foot. They're just awesome as long as you encourage them and teach them and introduce them to new elements in their environment. That's how you overcome aggression and that's how you get a happy hovey. Now, not all dogs are happy, but mine sure are. And there you have it. That's how I help my hovies develop properly. So let's get back into the puppies and check out their development stages today. And as you can see, his gold on his forearms is starting to come in. 
The white will vanish, but the gold will come in stronger on his chest and his cheeks as well. But when they're little like this, they don't really, um, they all, they pretty much come out all black and they don't get their colors until, oh, week three or four. And they'll kind of change around a bit. But to see that sweet little face, oh my goodness. How can you say no to that? <laughs> you can see he's got a little bit of uh, white on his chest. That white is a throwback to a purposeful crossbreeding with the Bernese Mountain Dog. Back in the early 30s and 40s for genetic diversity, as the Hovawart's been around since about the 13th century, documented, and it's a really, really a noble, royal dog, very loyal, very guard um, protective for guarding. <laughs> Not an attack dog. They were really popular. Then when the German Shepherds started to come out in the late 1800s, the Hovawart kind of started to decline in popularity, and we're in more of the Austrian and the Black Forest region of Germany, kind of up in the uh, farms as guard dogs for the estates. Well, let's listen here. There you go, he's trying to explore his world and wonders, what's this scratching on my back going on? It's actually good as part of uh, socialization. So this is Blue. He was our firstborn boy. Uh, folks, his eyes open. Blue, I haven't seen your eye. That's awesome. That's the first, folks. You got to see it live. His Blue's eyes open. Oh, go Blue. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, hi, Blue. Oh, we're going to love on you a little bit later. His eye just opened, folks. I just noticed it right here with you, live on FaceTime. <laughs> All right, Blue, I know you want to go back in the puppy pile of warmth and love, so put you back in the pile. <laughs> well, here we go, folks, puppy by puppy. I've got to go through every single one, check on them, document their growth, and also the touching and the hearing my voice is good socialization. And oh, who doesn't love a good belly rub? I can't emphasize enough that when these puppies are small, you've got to touch them, love them, rub them, tickle them. Every kind of sensation and interaction helps the dog feel comfortable with human touch, comfortable around voices and people, helps build their confidence. When these puppies are small, you can't touch and love them enough. You've got to get in with this breed early on and help them develop that strong independence and intelligence and associate that being with humans is a good thing. They're smelling me. They're exploring their new world. They're developing. This is all good. Also, we have to have these puppies checked every four weeks by a breeding committee and a German judge. And they look at the color, the paws, the nose, the eyes, the ears. They have to look at all the development parts of the puppy so we can determine which ones are following the proper traits and genetic looks of the breed standard for the dog. We're starting to establish and guess which dogs might be held back for breeding. And this brown puppy ends up being my Addy, as I held her back to hopefully be another breeding female for our future. But again, love and tenderness and interact with these puppies as often as possible. Time for a weigh-in. And uh, we got to turn it on. It does a little countdown, dealy wheelie. And then it should be all zeros, but just to make sure, I'll do the zeroing button, make sure it's zeroed. That compensates for the box weight. So now whatever we see for the puppies is actual puppy weight. And we're gonna have Jake pull me out the royal blue puppy. So he's gonna grab out the royal blue. They're gonna be about two pounds a piece now, so we're gonna use two hands. He's gonna put it in the box. 
And then we look at the score. See, it's one pound, 15 ounces, almost two pounds. Good job. So one pound, 15.0. There's yellow. Look at that puppy pile. How awesome. Yellow is going to come in at 113.6. Now it's dun dun. One pound, 10.2 ounces. One pound, 10.2. So she put on about 1.3 ounces. That's good. She was the smallest one of the litter. She only came in at, uh, what was her birth weight here? <laughs> okay, after weighing and feeding time, it's nappy time. Let's learn some more about the breed. But a guard dog, the Hovawart, does not cower from a strange noise or stranger, but also does not attack. They hold their ground and study, and only if that danger advances will the dog begin to guard and protect. But another thing about a Hova Ward is if the owner walks to that stranger and greets them, they warm up to them real quick. So this is a dog that takes a little bit more development, but with obedience and training, they're a great companion. And not you know, animals are animals, you always don't know what they're thinking, but with good socialization and good training, obedience training is really recommended as well, they make good decisions. Oh my God, how cute is that? Look at that. <laughs> and this is my life, folks. Every two and a half to three hours, day and people. night. I'm waiting for Anka to lie down. Here it goes. Watch this. joy of the quivering tail. When they hit the teeth, they're so happy. Now remember that weigh-in. If I saw a puppy falling behind, I'll sometimes intervene and put that puppy on a primary teeth to help them catch up. <laughs> Their tails just stick out when they hit the nipple. It's hilarious. <laughs> Yet, I'm going to leave the puppies alone and let them struggle and fight for themselves. This is good exercise, folks. It's good bonding, and it's good life lessons. So we'll let them eat and get a good night's rest because tomorrow's day 17 and another evaluation day. Anka's cleaning them up. She's a good mama. Here, come here, she says. Hold still. This here is blue. Now they're a little bit more calm, they just ate. But last time we did this, their eyes were just opening, they were still crawling, but maybe you'll see now, they're actually up on all fours and they walk. It's amazing how much they develop in about five days. He's calling for his mama and his brothers and sisters. And I know we wanna see his face, so I'm gonna try to get him to turn around here. You can see the gold is really coming in on his forelegs now, nice and strong. But do get that face. Good boy. You see, eyes are wide open. And he's singing. Now I'm going to continue this evaluation of the puppies. All the puppies go through the same screening day after day. Now you see a light of blue, but he was first born. He's always first to be evaluated. We do that to keep consistency and always make sure we don't miss a puppy. Now, the evaluation is gonna happen all the time. We video blog it, we upload it to our webpage. This way, the buyers of these puppies can check in two, three, four times a day and see how their puppy is being loved, attended to, fed, taken care of, socialization, experiences of what they've been exposed to all good things for the development of a healthy puppy and 
their eyes opening, their teeth, how I'm feeding them frozen carrots to help the teething process, all good information. And this applies to a lot of dogs, folks, not just hoof of arts. So this is good information. You should always make sure you're checking with your breeder and you're getting the same kind of quality for your new lovey furry friend. Be sure to tune in next week, folks, for more puppy development. These puppies are growing fast and you don't want to miss a moment. We've also got some hard talk and some sad time to discuss, but you've got to hear it in order to be a responsible, lifelong companion to one of these loving puppies or any loving animal. So be sure to tune in next week, folks, on Bark 101. Okay, we're not going to hurt ya. We're not going to hurt ya. Hey everybody, and from Kodak and I, please visit your local animal shelter first when you're looking to add a furry friend to your family. Also help control the pet population by having your dog spayed or neutered. It's right.